While COVID-19 itself is unlike any virus we've seen before, a wide-ranging pandemic is not. In 1918, the so-called Spanish flu spread like wildfire around the world, and it was a situation with some striking similarities to COVID-19. So how did San Antonio fare in 1918? Justin Horn digs into the archives from Joint Base San Antonio, Fort Sam, Houston, for answers. On a hot, dusty September day, the reports began to come in. Men who were very ill and the doctor of the camp came to Brigadier General Estes, who was in charge. This is actually Camp Travis now, and he's diagnosed 51 cases of the Spanish flu. Those at Camp Travis, which is now part of Fort Sam Houston, were quickly realizing that the 1918 flu pandemic had arrived to San Antonio. Quarantines were swiftly put into place. And at that point, no contractors, uh, no uh, spouses, no one could get on or off the base. World War I was winding down at this point, and many in the military knew the virus was out there and feared what was ahead. Men started to come back home. Um, we see it spreading and eventually it goes all over the world. At the end of September 1918 in Camp Travis, there were 51 known cases. Just two days later, an additional 240 cases are reported. On the 9th of October, the number of infected is around 1,000. And by the end of November, nearly 11,000 men have been treated for influenza at Camp Travis alone. An exponential growth. In 1919, a nurse assigned to Camp Travis would report 575 deaths from the pandemic. Sadly, the small mortuary at Camp Travis had to be altered to handle the sheer number of victims. Nurses, just like today, were on the front lines back then, some of them also contracting the virus. Meantime, quarantine orders for the civilian population of San Antonio came soon after Fort Sam Houston's, led by the city's health services director. He shuts down schools, they, they stop plays, public meetings. There was a debate back then, too, on how soon to do this. Regardless, the numbers were staggering a good number, but the, the number of people who contracted it, about 535 per 1,000, almost half of the population wow. at one point or another got this. In San Antonio, a town of around 150,000 at the time, more than 800 would lose their life. But for all of the similarities, there were some differences. The other thing is that it tended to affect the young more quickly and in, in many cases worse than the old which we see in the, in the current flu, not so much the case. Justin Horn, KSAT 12 News. Should be noted the Spanish flu likely did not originate in Spain. It was given that name because Spain's press, the first to report the spread of the disease, and then many mistakenly believe that Spain was ground zero. Researchers are still actually studying possible origins of the 1918 pandemic. That's fascinating stuff, Justin. Uh, it really was fascinating to sort of dig into the history, and thanks, by the way, to the Fort Sam Houston Museum. They provided us with a lot of those pictures.